Today we're going to be going over some reports which uh, have been sightings and encounters that uh, people have had between Centralia, Tenino, and Rainier. We are on our way right now to Skookumchuck Reservoir, where we believe is a central uh, Sasquatch location. There is some power lines that um, run off of the dam, the Skookumchuck Dam, and they branch out to very squatchy areas. So we're gonna show you the surrounding location and uh, as well as go to a few other spots of nearby sightings. So this is an area that we've suspected there's a strong possibility that Sasquatch come through. Um, there's one reason for that is we're at the Skookumchuck Dam and the dam is just a couple thousand feet in front of us. And what happens this time of year and, uh, and uh, when the coho are running, um, the fish trying to get upstream they build up right here by the dam and as you can see in some of the clips that we have it's loaded with steelhead right now and they're getting to they've been in the river for a while so they're starting to get pretty dark and we think that's a possible food source that the sasquatch in the area are utilizing the skookumchuck river and the chehalis one being a tributary to the other obviously have the same fish runs as well and right now it is absolutely loaded with steelhead that are heading back up towards the uh towards the skookumchuck dam where they um where they will spawn it's possible that the reason why the reservoir itself doesn't have sasquatch activity or sasquatch encounters is because there is nobody allowed up there you can't go up there not even the fish and wildlife man that works there has clearance to go up to that reservoir so the Sasquatch know who comes and who goes at what times of the day and that's always very important and, but and also the the fish right there at the dam are way too easy of pickings for them not to go on the other side of that dam and gather those fish Something that's interesting about the Skookumchuck Reservoir is it's about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 feet uh, wide, and it's about, f I think it's over four miles long, and so if there is Sasquatch up around the reservoir, they know that nobody's going up there. The man that we spoke with that works for Fish and Wildlife told us that Trans Alta actually owns 100 feet of land around the entire perimeter of the reservoir. So nobody can go there without that special clearance. This map shows the cluster of encounters we will cover today. The yellow lines are the power lines and the stars are sightings. This first one is from the dam. We met up with Scott Taylor, a member of the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. Scott has investigated more Sasquatch reports in Washington State than anyone else, including four of the five sightings that we will cover today. Here's Scott to recall the Skookumchuck Dam report. Today we're talking about uh, the idea of Sasquatch is using power lines as a, uh, an easy travel route. We're going to talk about today is four reports that all have power lines in common near Skookumchuck Dam is report 34710 and that was in the spring of 2012 there was a uh, a Native American guy with his family they wanted to go do a little target shooting there's some state land right there where you know, people can hike they can shoot they can fish just right along the Skookumchuck River and uh, they saw a uh, Bigfoot come up out of the blackberries near the river look at them, take a couple of steps, turn around, look again, and then walk off. They got a really clear look at that one. He was uh, reddish brown, 
Uh, he was about eight feet tall, judging by one of the limbs that they could mark as it walked by. And also they could, it was close enough that they could see the, the frilly hair on its arms, kind of like a golden retriever has. Uh, real common thing, I've seen that on some of the sightings that I've had. Uh, pretty, pretty normal. And you know, you take a, a hairy human being and you look at how their hair goes, it goes the same way. You can also see that hair imprinted in the, uh, uh, the skookum cast, you can see where it was laying down with this one arm in the mud. So they watched it walk away. Um, I went, re uh, investigated that report. Um, there was a fisherman who happened to have been there when the Sasquatch was there and he never noticed it. So I think it was watching him. Um, but what's in the background of my photos? Power lines. It's the same power lines, by the way, the exact same ones, but just a little further south. These are two photos taken by Scott Taylor at the time of the report, back in 2012. The arrow points to the berry patch from the vantage point of the witness. Note the power lines in the photo. This shows the direction that the Sasquatch exited the berry patch. So near the Skookum Chuck Reservoir, um, all of that area around there is um, off limits to people. And uh, the witness on this report that happened near there used to sneak in and he would find caves and and other artifacts that, that led him to believe that the Sasquatches were hanging around there. But even more, he used to hunt the Vale Tree Farm, which is Weyerhaeuser land over here. And you gotta have a permit. You gotta pay for a permit to get on there. And he was hunting one day and the transmission went out on his truck. And so he coasted down a hill to a log landing and pulled off there. He had to spend the night, and then the next morning, a warehouser guy came along and uh, gave him a ride back to town to get a, uh, a tow truck. When they got back, his truck had been pushed off the log landing, and big boulders had been piled on top of his truck. So he never got his truck back. But here's the interesting thing. Even before I got into... Bigfooting, way over here by Alder Lake, some kids were camping and they left their car up on the road and had to hike down through the woods to camp along the, along the lake here. They heard something going on with their car and so they started running up. As running up the trail, the car came down the side of the hill, crashing. The car had its was in gear and had its brake set and something pushed that car off the cliff. So we have something like that happen in the Vale Tree Farm. Same deal happened over here by Alder Lake. Are they connected? Possibly. So we're here right near the Skookum Chuck Dam. What's interesting about this exact location where we're at 
is the report from Big Hannaford Road follows that power line. The report from Rainier comes out on that power line. In the same small town of Tenino, there is an encounter from a Sasquatch Chronicles podcast episode. It's titled America's Boogeyman and the Sasquatch. It involves a group of 30 cadets and their four leaders. They were camping when a group of Sasquatch surrounded them. They began to vocalize, wood knock, and throw rocks. This went on for hours into the night. We will leave a link to the episode in the description. Close by the Skookumchuck Dam, uh, several miles away over in the town of uh, Rainier, is another sighting. And it happens to, it happens to follow along these uh, power lines that parallels this road, which was the closest road of the siding. And it was the Johnson Creek Road. And Johnson Creek Road goes all the way from Tenino to Rainier. Following the power lines northeast of the dam, we head to the town of Rainier. Here's Scott Taylor to recall the report. It is report 28856. And this happened in February of 2011. And it was near the town of Rainier, Washington. Uh, what happened was there's a, a young man who lived in the town of Rainier. He lived over by the high school. And he would hear their vocalizations from his house. And it was about a mile to a mile and a half away from his house uh, to the southeast. And when you pull up the map and you look from where he is, what do you find? You find a power line. So um, that's, you know, one data point right there. An area right next to Rainier that used to get a lot of reports was uh, Yelm. And I don't see so much of the recent reports that come from Yelm. It's possible that Yelm has become uh, a little overdeveloped and, you know, 20, 30 years ago that it looked a lot different. We are on Big Hannaford Road right now. We are heading to the Trans Alta power plant. Trans Alta owns uh, the dam that is at the Skookumchuck Reservoir that you cannot get to. And uh, Big Hannaford Road is um, the area where a sighting happened in 2015. The activity in the following report was ongoing and began the very day the residents moved in. Here's Scott Taylor once again to explain the report on Big Hannaford Road. The uh, third report is 49991 and that was in October of 2015. Uh, this could be a really long story, but the gentleman uh, turned in a report they had just not too long ago moved into this, this house. It's by the Big Hannaford Power Plant, about a mile and a half away, I think, as the crow flies. Behind their property is what is now Green Diamond Timber Company land. And that, that force came right up to within about 50 yards of their house. Well, from the day they got there, they were hearing the samurai chatter. They were hearing hoots, howls, lots of wood knocks one night he went out uh, he was hearing something he went out and he looked to the north of his house and there were two sets of red eyes and uh looking at him uh so he figured it was probably one of them he also had turkeys in a pen and any turkey that spent the night within arm's reach of the pen uh fence would disappear by morning so all his turkeys learned to stay in the middle of the pen at night uh, whatever it was that was taking them wouldn't step over but they would reach over and grab it uh, we went out there we found a lot of evidence we found glyphs we found tracks uh, i went up to stand where the preacher was and i had raised my arm like bobo does in the tv show and you know it was up about here was where the eyes were so quite tall um, we went out there several times later uh, did night sits um, it was going on there but what's right next to their house 
maybe 400 yards away, those same power lines. So, you know, we have all these power lines in common. All of these areas that we drive around to are very similar in appearance, very, very similar along this entire area that runs from, um, all the way from Centralia to Rainier. Yeah, Centralia to Rainier, which is a very large area. This report is the most recent report on the BFRO site for Washington State. It took place in Centralia, Washington, near the small town of Bucota. This report was also investigated by Scott. The third report is fairly recent. This is from last February. It's report 76933, and that's up on the, the website right now if you want to go look at it. And uh, Matt Moneymaker also posted a uh, uh, a story about it online on Facebook. This is down near the town of Bukota. Uh, what happened here is that uh, a guy, his three and a half year old son, and an 18 year old neighbor uh, decided they were going to take their dirt bikes, go around the locked gate, and do a little dirt bike, dirt bike riding up in the private timber company land uh, in that area. And so they went in maybe about two miles and they were on a ridge top that had been clear cut and they stopped to take a break. It was a beautiful sunny crisp day, clear air, no fog. And the three and a half year old pointed off to the north towards the power lines and says, Daddy, is that a Bigfoot? And they, they looked over there and sure enough, there was a very tall bipedal creature traveling from west to east through the power line right away, uh, tall, dark, a uh, mile and a half away, uh, but it was moving so fast compared to what a human could move that it could not have been a person moving, uh, traveling. So it had a very unusual gait, um, very long arms, uh, long strides, and it covered a lot of ground. And uh, they watched it for probably about about a half a mile of travel, and then it went up into a tree line and disappeared. So, you know, here we have another set of power lines. And when you go on uh, Google Maps or Google Earth, and you start looking at the power line right away, you can see how they lead from maybe the Olympics, you know, down to the Capitol Forest, you know, over to uh, Bukota Tananaino area, and then from there up into Weyerhaeuser's uh, Vale Tree Farm, the Bald Hills, from there, you can get right up to the Cascades really, really easy. Um, reports along Interstate 5 seem to correspond with them crossing somewhere near the power lines or at the power lines. They usually wait until, you know, after, well after dark when the, when the traffic has died down, easy to dart across the freeway, nobody sees them. So we have this in common. So if you're, if you're traveling along at that time of night, in those areas where the power lines are, you know, keep your eyes open, you might just get to see something. Though the following report is not immediately next to the power lines, it is nearby and it is very recent. In December of 2021, there was a possible sighting on Interstate 5. A motorist believes he witnessed a Sasquatch crossing the freeway during a snowstorm. The creature moved west 
as it effortlessly left a forested area and crossed a cement wall. The witness believed the Sasquatch was roughly eight feet tall. The odd thing about this report is the Sasquatch's destination. Once crossing the interstate, you're left with warehouses and neighborhoods. The only undercover route we could find is a discovery trail near the crossing point. The next time you're driving by one of these large power line roads, be on the lookout for the elusive Sasquatch. You just never know. You might be fortunate enough to catch a glimpse. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.